Hey folks, this is IOether, and we're back with some more World of Tanks. And yes, I didn't think the recording had started there for a second. Ooh, look at that. Those are three marks of excellence. Ooh. He's also got... I don't know what that to call that. Something on it? Yeah, no lucky. So, this should be a good game. Um... I mean, if you have three marks of excellence on tank, that means you're better at it than 95% of the players um, that week. I think is how that works. But the whole spinning around in circles thing, like, <laughs> starting to wonder. Uh, yes, he's trying to make sure that the most of it, he's going with the uh, the majority of the team because he doesn't want to be uh, end up on a flank by himself, unlike somebody we saw a couple of days ago. <laughs> That was Saturday's game, I want to say. Where somebody wasn't paying attention to the minimap and wandered over to a side all by themselves. Oh, I've forgotten to introduce the game, haven't I? Oops, my bad. Uh, this obviously, uh, I rush in T34A5M. This is a tier 7 game on Live Oaks. And this is the tier 6 um, Russian one of the tier six Russian premium tanks. This is the medium version. It's basically a T thirty four A five, um, with a ton, a few modifications. But um, if you're looking for a good all round tank for tier six strongholds, pick this thing up. I'm pretty sure they gave it out for free a while ago. If you held on to it, use it for tier six strongholds. It is amazing at that. Um, if you don't have any specialized tanks for for Tier 6 Strongholds. Also, I'm sure you can probably buy it, but I've, since I own one already, I haven't looked into that. Um, again, if you're looking for Tier 6 stuff, this is the tank you want. Assuming you don't already have something specialized out there already. Yeah. Um, and by, by the way, the reason you want it is because it's got a media gun, it's got some armor to it, it's got some speed to it, and it can really fulfill a ton of roles. And um, a bunch of these things can rip things apart. Um, what with its 180 damage, 144 pen. At tier 6, that's not bad. Um, especially, especially for a premium tank. Um, though it doesn't look like anything's going to happen in <laughs> this game, does it? As we have one scout down the other side of the map. And the rest of our team is right here. So we have th five tank destroyers on the team. Or sorry, six tank destroyers on the team, and five of them are immediately beside us. Oh, unfortunately, the blind shot misses, so the uh, the T thirty seven gets away. I'm not gonna say scot free, but he gets away, which is bad for us and good for him. It looks like the entire enemy team is in fact on the other flank, um, with our heavies not encountering anybody so far. Uh. <laughs> Ryrush tells the city to push now. I don't know if they're going to listen. There is only two of them in there. Um, and so they they can only do so much in a push. But he is coming up to reinforce the flank. We're also going to see if we can see that T-37 and take it out of the game. Because if we can kill their eyes, then that sort of thing won't happen so much. Did he just get Amorak? Or, I don't know. I don't actually know what happened to him. Oh, there's a tank destroyer up the, on the ridge line, apparently. Oh, not able to put the second shot in. It wouldn't... I mean, it's going to make a difference eventually. It's not going to make a difference right now, though. Because there's no way he does 200 damage. And, well, I guess it's, there's it's not no ways. Unlikely. We'll, we'll go with that. As my phone decides it needs to go off. Um, And I don't know who that is, so... Not going to talk to them. Uh, there is obviously an SU out there, and it hurts. He could run the gauntlet, um, but he'd prefer somebody else were to move up a little f first and and get shot. Because if, if somebody else can take the first shell, then he can probably get up there in, in the face and, uh, and start doing his work. But it looks like he's decided that, in fact, he needs to fall back. And look, look to reinforcing the base. Um, and just as he does that is when the Oni decides to push. 
Because that's, of course, how this is always going to work. <laughs> uh, T25-2 is still up on the starting hill, and he's using it to rain shells down into the guys that the Oni is pushing into. This Hellcat looks like it's probably in the open. It's not. It's on the other side of that hill, though. Um, and so now we're looking for shots on, well, this guy, because he is definitely in the open, as far as we're concerned, anyway. And uh, one or two more shells on him should do it. Yep, looks like the Hellcat finishes him off. Now let's see if the rest of their team is stupid enough to walk out into the open, or if they're going to hang back and play it a bit cooler. Oh, there's that T-37 that we've been trying to kill. Looks like we're not going to get a shot on the, uh, the P-43 there. Can we hit the T-37, though? T-37 going to run before we have shots on the other side. Maybe? Um, this game is quickly falling apart. We have... Oh, there we go. Three artillery at the back near our base. One Hellcat who's almost dead. And, uh, and there's a, a VK over there as well. Um, I don't know if I would have taken that blind shot or not, but I, f I, f you know, I feel like that was a good blind shot, but, um, I think that was, that was just because I, I wanted to shoot something. This is good sh shooting, though. Look at that. Just takes out the J Panther like it was nothing. Like, he planned it all along, knew exactly what he was doing. Oh, look, Artillery's up here, too. Well, Artillery was up here. Hellcat, Hellcat's got to have spotted us. Six cents is not going off though. So his Hellcat just spotted us there though, no matter what. Nope, Hellcat was apparently blind and didn't spawn us at all. And so not being spawned means he can just start pumping shells over this way without any kind of worry. And uh well that's assuming he can see targets over this way. It's gonna be different uh at least the, the Jackson on the enemy. Jacksons on the enemy team are looking away from us. If they're looking towards us, this would be a lot more difficult. Um, you'd ha he'd have to use some gold to, to go through them. Uh, he definitely can't pen the front of a Jackson who's angled uh, with standard AP. But because of the fact that Jacksons just are walking across the, the tracks like that, um, we actually have their full sides, and that's an easy shot to make almost every time. Um... Yep, see? <laughs> he's just Every time that they show him their sides, he just tags it. Unfortunately, he finally gets lit, as this Hellcat has some eyes. Oh, no, it's because there's a T-37 behind us. Now we're getting shot from both sides. He's got to get down off this hill, or he's going to keep getting nailed by the Jacksons. There, though there's only the one left in the VK in the corner. T-37 needs to die sooner rather than later. And it looks like that is what Irush is focusing on next. Don't forget that SU is still on the hill. If the SU decides to look this way, we are not going to survive a hit from him. So, gotta come up in such a way that we can kill the T-37. Not get killed by artillery. And not get spotted by the SU. And I think he's pulled it off. And he does in fact manage to kill the T-37. Now we can't just peel on out. Oh no, sorry, the SU's over there. Um, which makes this completely different. I think I'd go back to base myself because of the fact that these guys can start capping before you can get to their base and start capping. Um, I think he's looking for either the artillery or the SU. Obviously, the SU is nowhere near here. Um, and artillery is probably in this little trench I don't know I don't know if I would have done this I, th I know I would have gone back to base um, because of the fact that um, there's just two threats over there where it's, there's only one little one over here I guess two little ones and if one of these guys hits you with a, an HG shell that's going to be the end he does manage to circle the M44 though and kill it now, I'm sure he's going to go for the second one. He does stop to um, juke it out. Nice job. Knowing the M44 is fired means he can be a lot less cautious taking it out of the game. And uh, now he's going to look to... Oh, the Jackson jumped into the city. That probably means the VK is there too. 
I just hope that they are still, you know, t acting as in concert, even if they're not. Yep, the VK is there too. VK is on one health, is it? Yes, it is. But, I mean, it's still health, so assuming the VK gets a shot on somebody, he can still do some serious damage. He can take out the eyes too. It looks like he did damage to T25 slash 2 before it ran in and took him out. However, the Jackson took out the eyes too. And now it is effectively going to be a one on one. Whoever gets his first shot wins, except we come in and we're going to offset this a little bit. And so then, now the Jackson has to pick which direction is he looking? Is he looking this way or is he looking that way? Well, looks like he's probably not looking this way. Oh, he is too! <laughs> that ending though! If the Jackson had pulled the trigger like a half second sooner, that would have done it. He could have pulled the trigger when we just had our front wheels around this corner. I mean, we still would have won the game more than likely because T25 slash 2 would have just come around this corner and killed him. However, we would have been dead. So this <laughs> was really well done and down to the wire. I, I, I love it. Thank you so much, Irish. This was definitely worth it. Uh, let's jump over and see how <laughs> well he did in the end. Mastery Badge, first class. He also gets the Bruiser, Duelist, Fire for Effect. He, of course, gets the Pascucci's for prioritizing the already kills over everything else, which I guess in the end was worth it because of the fact that our entire team was on really low health and their entire team was on low health and a couple of artillers possibly could have like really swung the balance of that game. Uh, high caliber and top gun there. It's just like he is like he shot everyone on the enemy team. I I wonder if he did or or was affected by the models in some way. <laughs> wow. Just so much above everyone else on the team for both damage done and experience earned. With most of the team coming in under a thousand damage done. Like, how? What were you doing? Um, enemy vehicles damage was 11. So, no, he didn't affect the entire enemy team, but he affected a lot of it. So he did, thir he, he affected 13 tanks in out of 15. Yeah. And he made himself a tidy profit. Of course, if he run premium, it would have made himself a ton more. But you can't always afford to run premium, right? I mean, um, and the reserves was a good plan as a, a, as a secondary, as a backup. Because everybody has reserves from time to time. Well done, sir. This was awesome. Thank you so much for letting us watch it. And I can't wait to see your next game. That was amazing. And uh, this is IOE3. Have a great day.